My name is Tom. This is my friend Terrell. We're ministers. We pray for people and they get healed instantly of pain and sickness. Which one of you guys has pain that won't go away? Where's the pain at? My spine. Your spine? Yeah. What, what? How yeah. long ago was that? Uh, last summer. Last summer? You've been, your uh, spine's been hurting for a year? Yeah. I'm out training Terrell here on ministering healing in the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm training him. This is the first day. He's already done it once. Pain, go now in Jesus' name. Okay, now move around. Tell me how you feel. Nah. <laughs> nah. What? Yo, what? Hold up. Nah. What? <laughs> nah. Nah. It's gone? Yeah. Ain't that crazy? Cool? <laughs> no way. That's crazy, ain't it? What'd you do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what? A whole year? Pain, look at that. I'm telling you, it's so real. It's like the power of Jesus Christ flowing through the person. It's like when you believe in Jesus, he comes to live in you. He believes in Jesus, and he's and I'm just training him. I'm just telling him, you can do this. The power's in you. Ain't that crazy? All right, okay, what? okay, okay. Hang on, hang on. You just saved me a trip to the doctor. Okay. All right, I got detached detach kneecap. Okay. All right. How long have you had a de I've had a detached kneecap for about five years. Are you serious? About five years. Okay. So, right, so, so tell the kneecap to be reattached. Muscles, tendons, and ligaments. You can just lay your hand on his knee and say, "Muscles, tendons, and ligaments, be reattached in the name of Jesus Christ." And all inflammation go. Muscle, tendons, ligaments, and bone be reattached now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now move it around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how do you feel now? <laughs> <laughs> you felt something going on there, eh? Dude, what happened? What? Oh, come on! Are you serious? What? Are you kidding me? That's crazy. So, so, so you couldn't do that before? Ain't, no, 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 no. Ain't that, that crazy? Would that would hurt. I mean, that would hurt. hurt. I wouldn't be able to get my leg that high. Dude, that's crazy. Wow. This guy's got faith, man. Try it again. Try it again. Whoa! Are you so oh my gosh! <laughs> dude! Dude! Oh my, oh my God! Dude, what? are you serious? That is crazy. That's crazy. He loves you. He just healed you. And you and you what? know he's not lying, right? Yeah. You know what? He's my cousin. I've known he's had that forever. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> that's insane. That's insane. Okay, this is so important right now. This moment is so important right now. You guys need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now because that sign was to get your attention. That's crazy. My back feels awesome. Wow, that is crazy. Hold that. That's hold that. I want to explain the gospel to okay. you guys right now, all right? I've that in years. What? Let about, let's check this out. About 2,000 years ago, about 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to this earth. Meet Thomas Fisher. Tom's been doing street evangelism for 13 years and healing ministry for the last five. But more importantly, he's spent the last four years training others to do the same things. Amen. 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 God bless you, bro. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Thank, oh, man. thank you, guys. Oh, this is man. Amazing. the craziest day of my life. Wow, that is so amazing. We asked everyone we interviewed for their most practical advice for someone who wanted to get started in healing ministry. If you just, just start, just, I, it sounds so simple, but I've learned so much along the way. Like literally, like I didn't know much other than I'm supposed to pray for the sick. God wants to heal people. I didn't have tons of theology on it. You know, I just, like, all right, I'll try to be obedient. So I guess I would just respond to, it says heal the sick. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Those are things that are in the Word. And from there, just step out. My advice to anybody that wants to get started uh, operating in the power of God is to go out there and start sharing the, go the good news with people. Tell people about Jesus and don't concern yourself with, with results. Just obey what you've already been told to do. So get out there and share the gospel message with people. And if, there's some, if they, have, they have a need for prayer, lay hands on them and speak with authority and tell that sickness or, or pain or whatever it is to get out in the name of Jesus Christ and just and don't give up. The Bible says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I found that as I preached the gospel, miracles happened. People want eight ways of the seven steps of the conference to how to we heal the sick. I say to them, preach the gospel. You know, we live in a culture where we're afraid to talk to anybody. And, and my, I mean, my approach is, hello, how are you? 
I see, I mean, if it's a, if it's something as simple as a cast, you go, I see you're in a cast. Like, what happened? And, uh, you know, you ask, well, that has to be hurting you. How much pain are you in? And they tell you, and you just say, well, hey, I'm a Christian. God still heals today. Can I pray for you? Everything emanates from relationship. There's no formula. When I do healing schools, we don't teach particular ways to heal people because there is no particular way. Um, it all emanates from relationship, and I would encourage anyone who wants to enter into this, um, you must be in relationship with Him, and you must understand that it's really about Him and not you. I think people overcomplicate the, the issue of healing. Um, I've, I've read books about healing that when I got finished reading them, I felt less confident and less like I knew what I should do. I've heard people preach about healing, and when they get finished preaching, you think that only super evangelists with large um, ministries are able to, to see people healed. I think the key is just to simplify. It has nothing to do with our righteousness. If you want evidence of that, just look at Peter and John in front of the gate beautiful. They are the ones that said, don't think that it's by our righteousness or holiness that we've made this man walk. It's by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is the bottom line, it's faith. And everything that you introduce that brings confusion and that brings unbelief only hinders the power of God to heal. Just approach it with faith. Um, you need to get rid of any ideas that maybe you would, you know, none of these maybe prayers. You just believe God wholeheartedly and you take authority just like the disciples did, just like Jesus did, and you just command whatever that thing is to disappear. You command that pain to go. Get rid of your long prayers. And, and, and just use the name of you. And, and, and maybe your long prayers could work later, but in the beginning, just say in Jesus' name, be healed. But because I was still a younger man at that time, I used the more effort to pray for people. Yeah. I wanted to show up myself that I'm, I'm, I'm able. <laughs> so I would pray until my voice yeah. <laughs> goes off. But when I went on growing, growing, um, the Lord spoke to me. That the time you pray, I answer you. <laughs> so, these days, I don't take time, more time to pray for people. Mm -hmm. I believe God answers my prayer. As you, man, as you demonstrated this last mm -hmm. time when you came to Aninga, mm -hmm. I was blessed. Mm -hmm. Because the way we are doing things, it was like simple, but in the spiritual world, yeah. it was more powerful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just putting a hand on somebody, you just said, be healed. Yeah. And it happens instantly. <laughs> if I'm getting out of peace, then I'm leaning too much into myself. I'm, I'm looking to myself to get something done here. So forget all that stuff. Just remember what Jesus did. I have a very passive role in this. My goal is to put my hands there and that's it. I don't have to say the right words or the right prayer or, you know, get it all just right. I just got to do uh, what he said, put my hands there. <laughs> Sometimes we don't even have to lay hands on people so it's not about you it's about him it's just he, he just chooses to use us because you know that the father has all the muscle if you want to call it that and he just makes us look good right <laughs> if you pray for the sick but you don't take testimonies i feel like that's unbelief when you pray for the sick you should declare the wonders of the lord publicly i've seen people who will pray for the sick but then they don't take testimonies because the reason is they think nothing has happened. And if they ask for testimonies or they interview someone and ask them to, to say what has happened to them, they're afraid that nothing will have happened and they'll be humiliated. What I've discovered is that in those moments where I feel like maybe nothing has happened, I will intentionally go up to somebody and engage my faith. And I'll say, what's happening to you right now? And what I've discovered is that many times much, much greater things have happened than I even realize. And if I can just overcome that hurdle of unbelief, you begin to see the wonders that God is doing. And when people hear what God is doing in someone else's life, it's liberating. It causes, causes faith to rise. And suddenly miracles begin to break out all over the place. It's sort of like miracles beget more miracles. And so that, that's one thing I, I would encourage everyone who prays for the sick to do would be after you've prayed for the sick, have them test themselves and then have them testify what God is doing in their life. You'll see great results from that. And just ask the person, uh, I call it crossing the chicken line. You know, ask the person, if you pray, hey, how do you feel? Is the pain gone? And it's hard to do, but that's exercising your faith. And then just ask them again, oh, uh, it's not all gone. Well, let me pray again. And then put your hand out before they say, they just pray again and make it quick prayers.
And in the book of James, the Bible says that if so, any are sick among you, call for the elders, anoint them with oil, and the prayer of faith shall make them whole. Directly under that, it gives the example of Elijah praying for rain. He's praying for rain. He's praying for rain. There's been a drought. And he sends the servant to go and look for rain. I always feel for that servant. The big preacher's praying. He goes, looks for rain. There is no rain. He has to come back to the preacher and say, I'm sorry, the prayer that you're praying, <clears throat> it's not quite working yet. And it always surprised me that when the Bible was speaking of healing, why give this example? And you find that he, he doesn't say, well, there must, there, there's never going to be any rain. He prays again. He bows down. He prays for rain. He sends the servant. He goes, there's still no rain. He comes back. What does he do? Well, obviously God doesn't send rain. No, he prays again. And this is a great truth for those that are believing to minister in healing. Many times you must pray, pray, and pray again. I remember in many services that I've prayed for somebody that was deaf and, is anything happening? No. I could just turn away and say, well, God must not be doing that. But no, in essence, I'm saying, you've got to pray again because the Bible says so. In other words, you must have a tenacity, you must have a, a faith, that will not back down. And Elijah prays again. And he sends the servant. And the servant comes back and says, well, I've not exactly got a downpour, but I see the, a cloud the size of a fist. And sometimes I've seen in services where someone will say, well, I've not got my full sight, but there's a partial sight there. Like the man outside of Bethsaida, when he said, I see men as trees. What did Jesus do? He prayed again. He prayed again. For me, that has been a great breakthrough in my life, is that I've found that as I've kept pressing in, suddenly I get the breakthrough. We have so many testimonies of the next day, the next week, you know, a month later, all of a sudden they wake up and they were healed. And I believe anytime you do something in the name of the Lord, if it's sown in love and compassion, there is always a fruit to that. There is always a fruit. It's just about focusing on the one in front of you. If you just keep it the main thing, and the signs, wonders, and miracles, they'll happen. But if your focus is to go out and to see signs, wonders, and miracles, then you might be really disappointed. But if your focus is to go out and love on someone, you can't fail. Love never fails. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna lay my head on your knee. And then we're just gonna let God do what he does, okay? And there's pain now, right? Yeah. Okay, from one to ten, one to ten. Right now it's one and ten. One and ten, so it's painful. Okay, I'm gonna put my hand on here. Okay? And the Bible says, believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Okay, so I'm gonna put my hand right here. 